So now that we can turn our lights on and make them zoom in and out and drop in gobos and change colors, let's go ahead and get to the fun part, which is the flash and wiggle portion of the show. We talked earlier when we built the effects about the four different types of effects that I'm going to use. Um, for my focus uh, effects, I'm going to use a circle, a reverse circle, a pan, and a tilt sign. You can apply more if you want, but the more that you add, the more complexity you're you're adding as far as navigating. And for a quickly punted or quickly busked show, um, a lot of times I find that's all you need because combining them in different color combinations with different intensity effects can make them look like something completely different. So let's go ahead and we're just going to make cue lists containing these effects. I want, I want to put these in the upper left hand corner. I try to keep all of my effects together. So I'm going to put these in the upper left hand corner of my desk starting on fader one. Uh, and because of the, nomenclature, the ordering convention that I always use, spots, beams, and washes, I am going to put them in that order, spots, beams, and washes, followed by my floor spots and my floor, floor washes. I'm going to actually separate those out in this particular instance uh, for two reasons. I have the real estate to do it um, because I want to keep everything in this bank of five faders here so it keeps it together logically. Um, so I only have three types of moving lights, spots, beams, and washes, so that takes up three faders. And also I can see myself in a world where I want a big beamy look from the stage fixtures, the on-stage fixtures that aren't moving, and then I have the overhead rig come in and do some moving stuff. So this allows me to combine, combine the static and the moving looks in different ways um, by breaking those floor fixtures out in this particular instance. So I'm going to just, once again, record a cue list with those four types of effects in it. So we're going to go into blind. I'm going to create my blank cue list, Q1 slash 1 through through 4, enter. So I've created my four blank cues. I'm going to hit the last key to select the first cue in my sequence. Then I only want these to apply to the aerial spots, because I'm going to call out the ground spots uh, later on in another handle. So I want to select all of my spots, minus my floor spots, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to randomize that selection using offset random. I find that if I only have one handle to control um, my effects playback, if I do it in a linear fashion, it looks a little too wavy for me and, and I don't particularly care for the way that looks. So I like to randomize these selections so I can get more of that random beam sort of look. So I'm going to choose my offset random and I'm going to apply effect 101, enter. Then if I hit the label key immediately following that, it's actually going to take the label from my effect and apply it to my cue. I'm going to hit the next key, select last, it's going to repopulate my selection. And I'm actually going to reshuffle that selection. So I'm going to hit random twice, um, and it's going to unrandomize it and then re-randomize it in a different order. And now I want to apply effect 102 to those fixtures, label, and then in, the, in Q3, once again, select last, Shuffle my random again, and I am going to apply effect 103. And this is again where numbering conventions really come in handy, because I know that all of my focus effects are in the 100 series, and they're sequential, 1, 2, 3. I don't have to go into an effects list or be looking at an array of direct selects to know uh, what my effects are. I can just call them off the top of my head because I'm using a consistent numbering convention. Hit the label key here. And for Q4, finally, select last, re-randomize it, effect 104, enter, label. Then I am going to post that up on my first fader here, Q1 slash enter. And I probably want to label that so it's not just a circle in my um, display here, Q1 slash label. I'll call that spot. Faux FX. Because my, my display here is kind of limited, um, so I want to make sure it's something that's readable uh, and gets the point across, but doesn't bleed off the edge. Because if I just said spot focus, I, I don't know, is that a focus cue list? Uh, is that a focus effects? I want to be very clear that it's my effects. So I'm going to take that cue list and I'm going to make a scene for each one of those cues, just like I did for my position stack and my color stacks. Now one little cheat that I can do as I'm going to go and I'm going to repeat this for my spots, my beams, my washes, my floor spots, and my floor beams, is I can actually use the command, I can actually copy the scene labels from one to another. Because 
because I'm not copying the whole queue list this time, I'm, each queue list I'm doing individually because I want to make sure that I call out just the specific fixtures that I want for my effects selection, I'm not going to have the benefit of the scene names carrying over list to list. So for example, if we look here on my first screen, we can see that uh, I've created my four queues uh, with my labels for my selection, and they have the appropriate effects applied to them, but I don't have my scene labels. So I'd still need to go through and do that one at a time uh, for each one of these lists. But I can actually leverage a function of the copy to command to populate these scenes with very little additional work. So I'm going to select my q1 slash copy to slash, and here in my soft keys, we've used labels only. I'm going to go ahead and select scene only, scene only, enter. And it's going to put those scenes in there for me. And then I can put those scenes over here on my direct selects array, and I, they're already labeled appropriately referencing the correct cues. And then I just lather, rinse, and repeat for each one of these cue lists until I have my five different types that I want to use. So then I can come in and turn on, say, my spots and some of my beams, and I have, uh, I have control of, that, of those effects from both my buttons, right? I can start running my beam effects, or if I want to change the effect type, I can actually come into my focus effects and put them all in, say, a pan sine wave effect. And I can jump around and mix and match what effects are playing back um, tactily from the screen, or if I just need them to do something, I can just push the button uh, on my fader wing and have it go into doing something. Uh, let's talk about how I configure these faders a little bit. Let's take a look at QList1. Right? QList1, again, I'm going to leave my master set to proportional, but I'm actually going to change my, um, I'm going to change my fader to effect master. For focus effects, I like using effect master, and then I'm going to set my effects to fade by size and rate. Because I find that if I just fade by size, what ends up happening is they end up getting really small and really fast, and it kind of gets off tempo. But I do want a way to change how big or how small those effects are running. Maybe you know, I need that big effect for the end of a song where everything's going crazy. Or maybe I just need like a little subtle movement in my fixtures. I want to do that without the lights feeling out of place for how fast they're going. So I like using an effect master for that. Uh, I'm going to set this priority to 5, because I want it to take priority over uh, my movement stack. So I'm going to set that to 5. Uh, I'm going to set my phantom to on. Uh, keep my back from first and go from last set to wrap. I want my stomp to be release, so that when I run my blue out cue, it's going to turn this off, because remember we put that stop effect flag, that stop all flag, in the preset that is used in that queue. So when I run that blue out, it's going to stop all the effects that are running. And I want to make sure that this fader resets to the top of the list when it does that. I'm also, just for good measure, going to filter this only to my spots. Uh, and I'm going to filter the parameter only to focus. It's a little overkill. I don't necessarily need to do that. But just in case I end up accidentally recording something in there, um, I want to make sure that it's only playing back on the things that I want. This also sets me up for success later if I commute this file to other shows where my fader layout stays the same as I'm dumping things in and out of uh, groups and it's getting automatically sorted by the channel filter that I don't accidentally end up playing back things off this fader in the future that I don't want to.